Good morning or afternoon or evening or night campers. Remember that this weekend we are having our ACZC Angel City Zen Center Fall Retreat which is going to be carried online for everybody to join so please join that. The information is at aczc.org which you should be seeing on your screen. Also go there for all kinds of information on all sorts of stuff that we are doing at Angel City Zen Center all the dang time on Mondays, on Wednesdays, on Thursdays, on Saturdays and probably other days I don't even know about. Please join. Okay. Now, somebody asked me about meditating or actually doing zazen with eyes open. And the reason I make a distinction between meditating and doing zazen, well, I should probably do a whole video on that one, is because lots of forms of meditation are done with the eyes closed. But zazen is done with the eyes open. And whenever I give these instructions, I don't know, maybe it's just me being like a little paranoid or something, but I always feel like people think that I must be making it up, <laughs> you know, like, 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 what does this guy know about Zen? He's probably just making it up his own Zen thing. But no, that's a very traditional thing to do Zazen with the eyes open, and both the Rinzai form and the Soto form of, of Zen do it with the eyes open. The difference being that the Soto people face the wall when they're doing Zazen and the Rinzai people face away from the wall uh, facing each other. They're sitting in kind of a square or maybe sometimes a circle and looking out into the center of the room and they end up looking at each other. I think it's a little bit easier looking at the wall but that's just me. Anyhow, people ask me why we keep the eyes open. I get this all the time so this should be a, an FAQ probably. And the reason that was given to me by Tim, my first teacher, is that we are opening our eyes so that we're not shutting out the outside world. So if you shut your eyes, you're kind of saying, you're kind of making a philosophical statement by doing that. And you're saying that the inside world, the me, I am inside here behind these eyeballs. And so I want to concentrate on me that exists within and behind the eyeballs. When you open your eyes, you're saying that I extend all the way out into infinity as as uh, Shunryu Suzuki says, both infinite inside and outside. In fact, let's look at that quote that Shunryu Suzuki says because I have it pulled up. When we inhale, the air comes into the inner world. When we exhale, the air goes out to the outer world. The inner world is limitless, and the outer world is also limitless. We say inner world or outer world, but actually there is just one whole world. In this limitless world, our throat is like a swinging door. The air comes in and goes out like someone passing through a swinging door. If you think I breathe, the I is something extra. There is no you to say I. What we call I is just a swinging door which moves when we inhale and when we exhale. It just moves, that's all. When your mind is pure and calm enough to follow this movement, there is nothing, no I, no world, no mind, nor body, just a swinging door. So that doesn't really address exactly the, the idea of eyes, but I, I think it gives you the philosophical foundation for keeping the eyes open. You're, you're accepting the outside world as part of your practice. In practical terms, it also helps keep you from falling asleep and from daydreaming and, and doing all those other kinds of things. Legendarily, it dates back at least to Bodhidharma, who is the semi-legendary figure who supposedly brought the Zen practice from India into China and started Zen Buddhism as we know and love it today. And the story goes that Bodhidharma fell asleep. He, he, he supposedly went to this cave somewhere in China and sat for nine years facing a wall. I don't think he sat for nine whole years. I'm sure he got up to go to the bathroom and whatever. But, but supposedly he sat for nine years facing this wall. And at one point he fell asleep and he got so angry that he fell asleep that he tore off his own eyelids and threw them on the ground. And from those eyelids sprouted the world's first tea plants. Because uh, eyelids, if you tore them off, would sort of look like tea leaves, I guess. Uh, I don't think that's true, but often Bodhidharma is depicted as being very wide-eyed, you know, so that because he doesn't have any eyelids anymore when you, when you see a depiction of him. As far as history goes, in the Pali Canon you can find descriptions of meditation done with eyes open and meditation done with eyes closed, or at least that's my understanding. I haven't read the whole darn Pali Canon, but, uh, but when I checked it out, that's what uh, the person who <laughs> had read the Pali Canon told me on the internet. Um, 
that uh, that you can find both. If you look at statues of the Buddha and pay attention, he's usually not, you can get the impression that his eyes are closed, but most of the time, uh, there might be exceptions to this, I'm, I'm sure there are, uh, if you look closely, his eyes are kind of partially open. And I was once at a lecture, there goes Ziggy, uh, by Nishijima Roshi, in which somebody asked about how far open your eyes should be. And, and the normal instruction is the eyes half closed or half lidded, I guess, like this, like that. Uh, Nishijima Roshi wasn't uh, in favor of that. He said your eyes should be completely open. Now, of course, he didn't mean like starey like this, but, you know, but should be open rather than half closed. And somebody else asked him, if we should keep our eyes in focus or not and that I thought was an interesting answer because I remember that he thought about it for a moment uh, before he answered and then he says I think your eyes should be focused you know which is funny because it indicated to me that he hadn't really thought about it my own way of doing it is when I notice my eyes are going out of focus I try to pull focus as they say in the movie business and get them back in focus again uh, and but otherwise, I don't really obsess about it. Sometimes it just goes out of focus, and that's fine. I more pay attention to my posture. But when I'm paying attention to my posture, I'm also paying attention to my eyes. Now, here's a quote I found from Kobunchino Otogawa Roshi, who is my first teacher's teacher, as those of you who watch this video channel probably already know. And here's what Kobun says about eyes. He's giving meditation instructions, and this is just excerpted from part of it. The eyes should be kept open and hopefully see through everything, because your seeing is not your seeing. So you should see through. All our sense organs are finely constructed awakenings. You don't have to stare. As you notice, all information from the sense organs comes together moment after moment, and the mind eye is always functioning. Everyone actually has it. It is not newly opened. It's very easy to mess up your posture just by rolling your eyeballs around. If you come back to keeping your eyes still, then something opens up. And that's really all he says about eyes, but I also captured, uh, or copied, captured, the, the next couple lines, because I like them. Your still sitting is like a person who just shot an arrow, and a moment later the result is there. What you know is the sense that the arrow is moving all right. It has left your realm, but you sense it's running well. Stillness is like that. And I think that's kind of the way we do zazen. You kind of just do the zazen. You don't really worry about whether you know the thing that you want to happen is happening or not happening you know you people get obsessed by the the state of zazen and think oh, it should be like this and it should be you know clear and wonderful but no thoughts come and go and that's fine you don't worry about that just kind of shoot the arrow into the air and let it go and see what happens so there you go there you have it that's why we keep our eyes open in zazen it's a pretty simple explanation, I think. I, I kind of figured I would go on longer with this, but I, that's kind of it. We just keep our eyes open because the outside world is part of our practice and is part of us, ultimately, is part of who we are. We're not separate from the outside world. So you are enacting this non-dualistic philosophy by keeping your eyes open during zazen. So there you go. If you want to contribute to me making more videos like this where I explain things like keeping your eyes open or whatever, or you want to ask me something, uh, you can send your contributions to hard, uh, hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is how I make my living, and that's uh, I'm thankful to all of you who keep on donating. If you're having financial difficulties, don't donate to me because things are hanging on. Uh, I am very thankful, though, that a lot of you do donate because that's why things are hanging on so thank you very much see you next time have a good time all the time bye